This is John Cressman with MonkeyUncle.com. This is our Game Salad Platformer Tutorial, Episode 8. If you've been following along, you should have the current project file, but if not, you can download the project file from MonkeyUncle.com in our template section. Today we're going to be talking about a second method of making enemies. We went over a simple method yesterday that's very similar to the horizontal elevator but the enemy will kill the player and it will uh, have gravity. So today we're going to be talking about a second method uh, which does offer a slightly more flexibility but does require a few more actors and some additional rules. So the first thing you should do is if you have the project file, do a file, save as Platformer Tutorial 8. And we're going to start off by creating three actors. Actor 1, we're going to call Enemy 2. And actor the second one, we're going to call Bumper Left. And the third one, we're going to call Bumper Right. Now NOT, go ahead and drag that over so that it's in the enemies tag. Let's go ahead and open up bumper left. And what that's going to do, and we had a crash already. So let's go ahead and relaunch game salad. And this is why I ask you to save regularly. Often when they put out a new version, there's inevitably bugs. And those bugs will cause you to crash. If you haven't saved your work, it's frustrating. Now again, we're going to recreate those actors. I'm going to do them real quickly. We have enemy 2, which we're going to drag over here to the tag. We have bumper left and bumper right. Let's go ahead and file save that in case we have another crash. Now we're going to add graphics to this bumper left, bumper right and what they're basically going to do is when the enemy collides with them instead of having a start X and start Y it's just going to start moving and when it hits one of these bumpers it's going to change direction based on what bumper it is. So bumper left, if it's coming right, it hits bumper left, it's going to go left. If it's heading left and it hits bumper right, it's going to turn around and head the other opposite direction. So we're going to make some graphics so it's easy for us to set these up. Now hopefully you downloaded the game icons in a previous episode. If not, you can go up to kenny.nl, that's K-E-N-N-E-Y dot N-L, and download his game icons pack. In there, you're going to see various icons. And what we're going to do for the left, we're going to use the next icon. So just drag that over. Change the size to 64 by 64 because it's the same size as the enemy. And we really just want to change the physics information to zero. We're going to set a fixed rotation, not that it really matters. Uh, but we're going to remove the movable. We don't want this to be movable at all. And the only other thing we need to do is have a change attribute. And we're going to change self color alpha to zero. And if we've done this method before, and all this is going to do is it's going to make this invisible as soon as we start the game. That way we can see it when we're designing, but the player will never see it. Now for the bumper right, we're going to use the previous icon. And the basic reason I'm doing that is that if you notice here, this previous icon, it points to the right, and the next one points to the left. So we come in here, we're going to drive the previous icon over. We're going to change the size to 64 by 64. We're going to change off movable, turn on fixed rotation and set bounciness, friction, and density all to zero. 
And the only thing, the thing we have to do is the same thing we did before with the other one, and that is change self color alpha to zero. Let's go ahead and save this so we don't have another crash. So now we have our bumpers. We need to work on our enemy. So go ahead and click on enemy two. We're going to go to physics right away. We're going to change the density, friction, and bounciness to zero. We're going to turn on fixed rotation and we're going to leave movable checked. Let's go ahead and change the size to 64 by 64. Now we're going to give it an image. Let's go ahead and file and save. We're going to give it an image, but we're going to actually make it animated, sort of like we did the other one. So I'm going to come over here to the images library. We're going to close down the game icons because we don't need any more. Open up the platformers. And this time we're going to use the green worm. And there's a worm green, which we're going to drag over. And then there's a worm green move, which we're also going to drag over. So you've got the two different animation frames. We can close that down. Let's go ahead and save this. And now we can go ahead and drag one of those worm graphics up here just so it has a graphic representing it. And now we're going to add some behaviors and some rules. The first one we're going to add is the accelerate behavior. This is going to be our gravity. And again, that's relative to scene. It's going to be 270, which is straight down. And we're going to move the change the acceleration to 1000. Now again because it has gravity we want to add a collide behavior and we're going to have it bounce when colliding with actor of tag solids. Okay. Now with this one you can actually have it fall off of a platform and continue going unlike the other one. I guess the other one you could do it. It's just a little more difficult. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add the animate behavior. And we're going to make him slightly faster than the snail. So we want to have the frames per second at 6. We want loop checked, but we're going to uncheck restore actor when done. And then we're going to go to image library and we're going to drag the two frames of worm animation over into the animate procedure. Let's go ahead and file and save. We're going to add an attribute. Now on the last one we added a start x index and an integer called speed. Here we really only need the speed. We're going to change speed to 100. All right. So now we're going to create some rules. And these are going to govern when it runs into those little bumpers. So we're going to say when the actor receives an event, collapses or co overlaps or collides with actor of type bumper left, meaning it's heading right, it hits this bumper, this left bumper. So that left bumper is going to send it to the right. As we know, right would be a positive change. So we're going to set enemy or self motion linear velocity x to that speed, self speed that we just created. So that's the positive. Now we're going to duplicate this. I'm just going to call this left bumper. And now I'm going to duplicate this doing the Alt or Option, click and drag. I'm going to rename it right bumper. We're going to change this, of course, to actor overlaps or collides with type bumper right. Now if it hits the right bumper, which means that's the furthest it's going to go to the right. It's going to change direction. So in this case, we're going to change this linear velocity x 
to negative speed. That will send it back to the left. Okay, so now we have our colliding actors that will control the movement. You have our animate. The only other thing we have to do is give it a starting speed. So we start that right up here. You change attribute motion linear velocity x to our self speed attribute. That means it's going to go to the right first. We can change this to initial speed. So now I'm going to save it. We're going to go to our scene. We're actually going to go ahead and delete our poor little snail. So we're going to go to scene, layers, enemy one. And I'm going to hit this minus key and now it's gone. So let's go back to game. Well, actually, we don't need to go back to game. We can just go over here. So we have the list of actors. We're going to pull enemy two. And we're going to put him here. But now we don't set an X and Y. What, instead of what we're going to do is we're going to pull the bumper left and bumper Y. Or bumper left and bumper right. Now I'm going to go ahead and preview this. And as you can see, he's moving back and forth. Now, as you can guess, if we go to scene and layers, scene, layers, open up HUD. Oh, no, he did not go into. So we have bumper right, bumper left and enemy two and they're all in the background layer which is where we want them we don't want them in the HUD so now if you noticed he wasn't changing direction so we're just going to go in and edit the prototype and we're going to add that rule that says if attribute self motion linear velocity x is greater than zero then we use that change attribute to change self graphics flip horizontal to true and of course if it's not then we want to duplicate this and change this to false instead that's just going to flip him around so he's facing the correct way based on how he's moving. And as you can see, he slithers along there going back and forth. Now, like I said, this method is slightly more flexible, and I'll show you what I mean. If we go back to scene. I'm actually going to have him walk off and I'm going to drag and duplicate this I'm going to have him walk off he's going to fall he's going to hit this bounce and he's going to go back and forth between the two now, if for some reason he happens to get on this elevator, I want him to, if he makes it all the way over here, I want him to immediately turn around and fall down. Now, he's not going to be hurt by the spikes because we have no rule for that. But what we are going to do is we're going to have one on this side of the spike. So if he does hit here, he's going to hit this and he's going to turn around and he's going to go through. He'll ignore this because he's heading he's already heading left. So let's see what happens when I do this. I'm going to actually file and save. And there he has it. He slithers down, he falls, and then he starts heading the other direction. Now he hits that bumper, which of course you can't see right now. He's going to go back 
and fourth now on the bottom. So as you can see, that's more flexible because technically he's got multiple patterns depending on what happens. If he were to, if we just change the speed or if we change where this horizontal elevator is actually starting, he might actually be able to make it on the elevator. And if he does, then he would drop over here, which of course would cause him to turn around. And now he has this expanded movement field down here at the bottom. And technically, you could. We're going to go home, go back to that scene. Now, say I want him to go away from here, but I want him to now be limited to only underneath this area. What I can do. As we can watch him drop, I added that extra one. Now see, he just keeps going. Doesn't matter to him because he's was already heading that direction. But now he hits that bumper, and now his new movement field is just underneath that platform. So as I said, it's a lot more flexible. You do have to think about how the movement, how he could move, how he could be interacting with things, but it is. A more flexible movement if you need that type of movement some some games you won't you can go with the more simple movement above it uses less resources because you use you're using more actors this way but like I said this one does have more flexibility and it's worth noting which is why we made this episode 8 so thanks for joining us this is John Cressman with monkeyuncle.com remember you can download the templates and see our other tutorials on monkeyuncle.com